Hi everyone, welcome again. In this lecture, we will cover the basics of Apache Kafka. And in the next video, we will implement a simple use case with microservices and Apache Kafka. Let's start with the basic question, what is Apache Kafka? And this is straight from the documentation. Apache Kafka is an open source distributed event streaming platform. What is distributed? Distributed means Apache Kafka can run on multiple nodes, multiple machines. And here by machines, we mean it could be a container, it could be a virtual machine, it could be a physical machine. Kafka is highly available because it can run on multiple machines or nodes. So if a set of machines or nodes go down, Kafka is still up. We can still work with Kafka because the remaining set of machines or nodes are still up and running. And for the same reason, it is fault tolerant because it can tolerate some faults. Kafka is highly scalable because we can add more machines easily to get more power to produce or consume more data to handle more data we can simply add more nodes more machines to scale the kafka cluster and due to the distributed and highly scalable nature of apache kafka we get the high throughput we get more work done by the apache kafka cluster next if you notice the highlighted keyword event streaming platform what exactly is this in order to understand what is an event streaming platform we need to understand four key characteristics which are described here Number one is an event streaming platform can capture the data in real time from different sources as a stream of events. We will cover events in a later slide, but right now the focus is on the characteristics of the event streaming platform. So we capture the data in real time from different sources. These different sources can be database, uh, it can be a different microservice, it can be an IoT sensor or anything which is producing the data. All right. The next step is we store these events durably so that these are not lost. So we capture the data in real time, then we store these events durably. The third step is processing events as they occur or retrospectively. An event streaming platform makes it possible to process the events in real time as they occur or retrospectively. That means we can go back in time, we can reprocess some events depending on what we need. And the last step is routing the events to different destinations once we have processed the event we can choose to send the same event to different destinations so for instance let's say uh, we received an event from a microservice we processed that event we did something based on that event and later we can send the same event to the database so that the data or the corresponding event can be saved in the database so that is possible with an event streaming platform all right so kafka is able to capture the data in real time it can store the events durably and with the help of Kafka we can process the events in real time or retrospectively and we can also route the events to different destinations. So that makes Kafka an event streaming platform. Now in this slide we will cover the main concepts or the terminologies related to Kafka. Let's start with the event. An event represents an activity, something happened in the system and that is an event. For instance an order gets created that is an event. Notification service sent an email notification that is also an event, a job failed that is also an event. In Kafka world, it is also called a record or a message that is sent from producer to consumer that we will cover next. Producer is any application or any system that is producing the data and consumer is any application which is consuming the data. Next comes the topic. Now topic is an important concept and important entity in Kafka because that's where the producer sends the data to and from the topic consumers consume the data. Consider it as a category of related events, a collection of related events, a place where producer would put an event and the consumers would consume the events from that place. You can also consider a topic like a file where producers would write the data and consumers would read the data, same as the log file, an append only log file. The next term that we need to understand is partitions. Now topics can be partitioned, a single topic may have different partitions and if you consider a topic as a folder on the file system then partitions would be different files in the same folder, they belong to the topic. So when a producer produces an event or a record or a message that will go to a particular topic and inside that topic the record will be appended to one of the partitions and the consumers would consume those records or messages from one of those partitions depending on the configuration. 
and the last thing is broker a broker is a node or a machine that is actually running the kafka software when different brokers come together they form a cluster which is also known as apache kafka cluster brokers are used to store the events in the form of topics and partitions so the data resides on these brokers let's move on now that we understand the basic concepts here is a representation of what we learned so here this is a broker this is a node or a machine on which kafka is running and let's say we have a simple topic topic 1 and topic 2 on the left hand side we have two producers producer 1 is producing data to a topic and producer 2 is producing data to multiple topics which is possible topic 1 and topic 2 then on the right hand side we have two consumers consumer 1 is consuming or reading data from topic 1 and consumer 2 is reading data from topic 2 we can create many topics depending on the requirement so let's say in a system we have a topic specific to new users so that means whenever a new user gets created the producers maybe the ui application or the backend server would generate an event and that event will be stored in that topic that means a new user was created now if there are consumers which have subscribed to this topic and when they pull and receive an event they will know that a new user was created so they can act accordingly and similarly we can have different topics here we see a different representation of a single topic and partitions as we said topics can be partitioned a single topic can have multiple partitions in this diagram there is a single topic but it has three partitions p0 p1 and p2 now you can consider these partitions as different files log files append only logs that means in this diagram producer 1 is producing data to p0 and p1 and if you notice this represents a single record and if you notice p1 we have two records this is the first record and this is the second record which was added in append only fashion that's why these are also called append only logs and similarly producer 2 second producer is producing data to p2 partition which is the third partition and any consumer can read data from any partition so consumer 1 is reading data from p0 and consumer 2 is reading data from p1 and p2 both this is all fine now consider this broker goes down so this broker had this topic with three partitions but it crashed for some reason what would happen then we will lose this data so how do we avoid this we know kafka is a distributed system which can run on multiple nodes and in one apache cluster there would be different brokers so that's how an apache kafka cluster would look like a cluster would have different brokers broker 1 broker 2 broker 3 broker 4 it can have let's say 50 brokers or 100 brokers now in this simple diagram we have two topics uh, these three belong to topic 1 and these three green colored belong to topic 2 and if we simply focus on the yellow colored we see leader and replica what does this mean so a partition is replicated on different brokers to avoid the data loss in case a broker goes down now consider this particular partition which is on broker 1 then the same partition gets replicated on broker 2 and broker 4 since a partition can be replicated on different machines what kafka would do out of these replicas for a partition it would assign a leader replica and the remaining replicas will be called follower replicas and kafka would also assign a broker for the leader replica so in this example if we simply focus on the yellow colored replicas or partitions this is the leader replica and broker one is the leader of that replica or that partition and these two yellow colored replicas are called follower replicas similarly for the green colored partition broker b is the leader of this leader partition leader replica and broker one and broker four are storing the replicas of the second partition now what would happen if a producer wants to produce data or to store data for that partition it needs to talk to the broker that is the leader of that partition so in this example if producer wants to send some data or produce an event for this partition yellow colored partition it must talk to the broker one because that is the leader of that partition so when the producer produces an event the event would be added on broker one to this leader replica and then this broker would sync the updates to the follower replicas on broker two and broker four and similarly if an update comes or an event comes for this particular uh, partition green colored 
it must talk to broker 3 and then broker 3 would sync the updates to broker 4 for this replica and broker 1. So Kafka tries to keep the replicas up to date so that let's say in case broker 1 goes down, it would elect a new leader for yellow colored replica, let's say broker 2. So we don't lose the data and we can still function in case a node goes down. So that's how Kafka cluster works in general. So let's move on. Here we will discuss a simple use case with and without Kafka. So let's say we have an order service which is responsible for creating orders. Then we have this notification service which sends the notifications to interested parties that hey a new order got created. And then we have a user which makes this API call to order service. It could be a client, it could be a user interface. Now without Kafka we would generally implement this communication between order service and notification service using HTTP calls. These HTTP calls would be synchronous calls, blocking calls. And that also means until and unless we receive a response back from notification service, order service is blocked. And we generally implement this kind of communication using REST client or web client or open fain. And in this pattern, it also means that order service and notification service are tightly coupled. And so a slowness in notification service can slow down the order service as well. Now how do we solve this with Kafka? With Kafka we can decouple the order service and notification service. So what would happen in this case when user makes an API call to order service, order service will create a new order in the system. Then instead of calling the notification service directly, it will create an event that will be stored to this order topic in Kafka. An order service can now move on, it can process another order and similarly it can create next event that will be added or appended to the same topic. Now notification service when it's available depending on its speed and throughput, it will poll this topic, it will pick a new event, it will consume that event and send the notifications to interested parties. So when we are using Kafka we can scale this whole system, we can decouple order service and notification service. And a slowness in notification service would not slow down the order service because these are decoupled. Notification service can process the events at its own speed. It will not block the order service. Alright, so this is a very simple use case that shows how can we use Kafka in our systems. Alright, in the next video we will implement this scenario using Spring Boot and Apache Kafka. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.